nil-akkomal edizzjoni uħra ta' business chat illu program da' xejn differenti mis-sult u għanu normalment għet nġibu nisa unek illi bdow negozju għan kalla għet imeċxu negozju għbir u għet nitolbu għom jaqsmu ma' għana suġġerimenti u pariri biex dak li jkun jgħet jitħajjar jiftaħin negozju tijo jgħon kalla jgħet fil-fazi ta' start-up jġifiri kurandu jibda negozju jikollu daq xej ta' għajnu na permess ta' da' suġġerimenti pero l-lum għammorru one step further kif jiedu inglizi għana smu għakom daq li jissejjaħ networking u biex namel dan l-lum għandi miej persona li muwix malti għaldor program sa' jikun jgħet bl-inglis pero u għa persona li jafsow xinu networking u fil-fattu għal persona għara networking group li nħoloq bejn group ta' businesses maltin u li jadu għaddej għanki l-lum. David Bullock, welcome to Business Chat. I thank you for finding the time to meet us today. My pleasure. In my introduction, I introduced you as a guru of networking. That's very kind. Let's start off with yourself. What brought you to Malta, David? Ah, well, it's a good place to come in the English winter to start with. But apart from that, <laughs> I was at a meeting in the House of Commons. I met your High Commissioner, Joseph Zamatubona, who asked me to the High Commission, persuaded me I should come and look at Malta as a place to start a business. Um, and he was right. So I came here four years ago, having had a lot of experience of networking elsewhere, to set up a business basically to help business people get more business. And it seems to be going very well. In fact, I tell my friends in California, the special thing about BNI and Malta is the quality of the people. Networking, it's our main guest for this program. What is networking? Networking um, seems to be uh, a word which interests every businessman, but then not everyone is willing to network, actually. Let's start with defining networking. What is networking, David? People used to say it's who you know, and it isn't really who you know, but it is perhaps how well you know them. So it's getting to know people, seeing how you can help them, building rapport, building relationships, and establishing mutual trust so that you can really help each other. It's getting to know people much better, in detail, but essentially it's an attitude of, how can I help you? So it's not a business to business kind of thing it's more of a person a person to person absolutely because you build a relationship with that person get to know the person better and then of course uh, recommend his or her business you is that yeah you've probably heard sales trainers say um, people have to buy you before they'll buy your product or service so it's very much building personal relationships but the great thing gordon is it's a learned skill you aren't a born networker or a, a failed networker how how do you figure that as, as a skill. How do you develop it as a skill? I think the most important element is listening, including listening with your eyes. So you're looking at gestures of people's body language, you're trying to find out how you can help them, but you need the attitude of, can I help? Let me tell you the thing that's happened to me this morning. On my way here, I was in a car crash and a lady reversed into me. And instead of getting terribly angry, and going out and demanding that her address an insurance company, I explained it wasn't too serious and started networking with her. And she'll be at one of my meetings two days later this week. <laughs> so you can always, if you have an attitude of where's the advantage, how can I turn this to good effect, you can always do something. So it starts, I think, with your personal attitude. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's very interesting. But why should businesses collaborate? Um, most, most of, quite often, you'll find business pages who are not really willing to share their trade, their skill, their services with other businesses. Mostly being because um, I know what I can provide. I don't, I don't really trust uh, other services. What if we let the client down? So why should business collaborate, David? Well, why should they not collaborate? Because if they can do better collaborating, why just see the other person as a, a dog waiting to eat your dog? Um, there is an attitude that you hold it all to yourself. And you get this in large companies where quite often managers won't pass on information to others because they see it as a threat and it's maybe part of their assets for promotion. But if you start with an attitude of literally, how can I help you? What do you need? What can I do? It changes the whole dynamics. And the funny thing, it works everywhere. I mean, in my organization, we're in 58 countries around the world. It crosses cultures. In fact, Once you build a relationship, you're not only tied, you don't network only in Malta. You, you personally 
David, network in other countries as well, right? Yes, I network in a lift if there are other people in the lift. But I, I do, and I spend a lot of time in South Africa as well as the UK. I said 58 countries. The point really is we cross cultures. And it's not a restricted thing. It's not an American thing. It's worldwide. But you have to have the desire to help each other people and discover. Because it's all on relationships. So it's all about how can I help you rather than how can you help me <laughs> totally. uh, get more business. Totally, yes. But you can, um, you can help by feeding information. Um, if, if I met someone looking for um, a PR company, I might well recommend you. I wouldn't until I got to know you. But I happen to know that the International Air Show was a great success. No one could park anywhere. There were so many people wanting to go. You obviously did a good job there. So what I can do is say to someone, oh, I have no idea whether he's very good. I haven't used him myself. But I'll tell you what, wasn't that a great international air show? And he did a super job there. So in, in other words, I'm using evidence of what people have achieved. So I'm not pushing you hard. I'm just giving people the opportunity to consider you and put you on a short list. But I'm putting my reputation on the line for you. I can't do that if I don't get to know and trust you. That's why in a hard networking group, you meet on a weekly basis. You have to get to know and trust each other. So, so let's get to the more practical side of things. As I said uh, earlier in Maltese, throughout this program, we have been trying to get um, successful entrepreneurs from various sectors, explaining their experience and uh, sharing tips or suggestions with those who would like to start off or are thinking about starting off their own business. Of course, you do recommend networking, seeing how, how, how involved you are in, and I do actually also. What the, in a networking group, what, what happens really? What's, uh, what's it like? What's, what's the agenda? What, what do people do in a networking group? I think the starting point in many ways is, somebody once said to me, spend 80% of your time on the solution and only 20% commiserating about the problem. So you're looking for solutions and how you can actually help. So I'm beginning, to, if I walk into a room like this, I'd look at different people and I'd go up to the people I don't know. If I saw you in the corner, I'd probably wave my hand and say hello, but I would not waste time talking to you because I know you quite well by now. I would go and hunt out the people who I don't know and the people who want help or need help but maybe don't want to ask for it. So what you're doing really is building rapport, which is what I suppose I did with the person who crashed into my car. You build a relationship as quickly as you can with someone and you find out how you can help them and take it from there. Well, the funny thing is, the more you help people, the more they want to help you. Funny that, isn't it? But it's human nature. I think, it, yes, it's, it comes naturally then, of course. Yes. If, if you referred uh, a business to me, I, I will feel a natural um, need to give it back, almost, like to refer yes. back something. Absolutely, else. and it's not an obligation you feel. It's almost that you want to help, you have an inclination to help the people who help you. And you, you said earlier, why should uh, companies collaborate? And I said, in effect, why not? Because if you do start thinking of your rivals as people who, yes, they're partly rivals, but they're also fellow travellers in your community and in your world, and you can probably help each other more than you can compete and destroy each other. So why be aggressive and negative about it? No, no definitely. It makes a lot of sense. And it works. And it makes your day much pleasanter. Of course. Plus, besides the business per se, you also have uh, a group of friends who can support you uh, when you're meeting difficulties. I've had several people in my organisation over the years, and particularly in England, um, even go as far as to say, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for your organisation. Uh, I would have committed suicide or gone, because when I hit hard times, I had this group of people who were a support network, and they would take every interest in trying to make sure that I was okay and successful. So, for a lot of people, that's the end benefit. Let me mention one more thing, because in, uh, again, the organisation I've come here and running in Malta, the most satisfying thing is seeing people come in with very low self-esteem, they hate speaking, we may give them a minute, they only want to take 15 seconds and sit down again. And in six months' time, Gordon, I promise you, you can't stop them. It's as though you switch on or switch on their back and they're into it. Because they've built up this relationship with people and all the people in the room 
are essentially friends and supporters. And too often, I think, business people live in a little cocoon and maybe keep people at a distance. Whereas if you actually open yourself up and build a relationship with people and a relationship of trust, it's amazing what can actually flow from that. Yeah, it is, and uh, it's also very efficient. Because yeah. especially when dealing with large organizations, you don't actually see the actual business behind, the, the brand behind that person. Yeah. Your communication is with your colleague, with, you, with a person you can trust. So it's easy just to you know, give a quick call to someone, listen, I have this problem, blah, blah, blah. And probably the other side will tell you, okay, let me see what I can do about it. Exactly. And uh, because there is that hidden commitment, kind of, and respect, mutual respect, in the relationship you would have built over the years or weeks, um, you would probably end up solving your problem in no time at all. Um, and that's the spirit, I believe, of, of a networking group. Am I right? Do you agree? Yes. <laughs> well, you, but you also hear it said, don't waste time and money learning from your mistakes. Learn from other people's mistakes. And the more people you know and people in your network who trust you, the more they'll tell you that they tried this and it didn't work. Don't make the same mistake as I did. Now, that's valuable information. And to get to the point where people will admit what's gone wrong, you know, I've, I've been divorced three times. Let me tell you, uh, let people advise you. There's no, no sin in asking for help. Is networking a form of secret, dark, or some sort of organization? <laughs> it's a question that sometimes people tend to ask when they say, yes, my, yes, I can refer this person for this job, blah, blah, blah. So some people might actually think that this is the case when, of course, reality is very much different. Not in my experience. You do get in some nations uh, an attitude, family first, and that can be a bit of a challenge. But it's amazing how if you come into a country where it is family first, that will break down when people see that that doesn't really work. No, there's no dark art to it. It would be nice if there was, but there isn't. But it is a learned skill. So if you put time and effort in learning it, you can make it work for you. Thank you, David. I want to thank you for your time. We are with you, of course, in the next program. We are going to talk to you about the people who are in the middle of the day. We are going to talk about networking. We are going to talk about how the company is going to help you to use the service of the company, and also to talk about the business of the company. And we are going to collaborate with you jibnu relazzjoni bejn jitom u wieħed ħossu iktar komdu li rakkomanda lil ħabib tiegħu jew il-persuna li u jafsew u jafsew tfisser fil-business jifri serju u jagħmel delivery ta' dak li fil-verità i wieħed iwassal dak li wieħed u allura inti tħossok iktar komdu li tirrakkomanda ħalbiċċa xogħol u hekk jaħdem in-networking. Però ħaj konna aktar dwar networking li xġerilkom tibqgħu s-seguna għax dan huwa ċaffetta ta' suċċess għal diversi organizzazzjonijiet, speċjalment nies illi għadhom litteralment flowwell fażijiet ta' negozju tagħhom. Inkunu magħkom wara dawn ir-riklami. Nilqagħkom għat-tieni parti ta' business chat, illum il-programm huwa daqsxejn differenti mis-soltu, qegħdin nitkellmu fuq networking. Iġifieri meta grupp ta' nies jingħaqdu flimkien biex jgħinu l-xuxin jkomplu jikbru fil-negozju tagħhom, naturalment mhux bladdoċ, iġifieri wieħed irid jibni relazzjoni, jibda jafdak, jara li inti you mean business, jara li inti persona tal-kelma, u mbagħad wara minn hemmhekk tibda tiżviluppa relazzjoni biex finalment li finalment twassal biex dawn il-grupp ta' negozjanti ta' business persons jibdew jirrakkomandaw il-xuxin għas servizzi differenti. Biex nagħmlu dan ma nagħna lil David Bullock, David. It's the second part of the program. So far, we have we have spoke we spoke about uh, networking and its benefits and what it is, etc. Now I would like us to be a bit more specific. I met with the term elevator pitch, which is an interesting concept, and I would like you to explain it um, further. What is the elevator pitch? Well, let me ask you: Does anyone ever say to you, "What do you do"? Yes, of course, continuously. <laughs> so you need to have an answer to that. Now, mm. one thing I usually do in trainings is to say to people, row people, what do you do, what do you do, what do you do? And almost invariably they give me the wrong answer. They give me the name of their trade or profession. I'm an accountant, I'm a lawyer, or the name of their company, I'm a salesman. They don't tell me what they do. Now, for example, an accountant, 
uh, he isn't doing accounting, he's using accounting to maybe help you save tax. So the key thing is to know what the end benefit is that you give your customers. Now if you're in a lift, it's a good example, there's somebody there who could help you and you've been trying to meet them for a long while, they're there at a conference, and you've got three or four floors, you don't quite know before they go. And you want to get to the point where you can't give them a sales pitch, but you can maybe get their permission to call them by telling them something that you could do for their organization, the end benefit. So thinking about what you do first is good. And then make sure that you've got maybe a 10 second and a 20 second and a 30, maybe a minute, little speeches, presentations for different occasions when you get the opportunity. And can I give you viewers some homework? Yes, of course. Well, and I often do this, and it's great and very satisfying. You know the way most people get into a lift and someone else gets in and they look at the ceiling and they look at their toes and they adjust their tie and they're embarrassed and total silence. Can I suggest the next time that you or any of your viewers go into a lift and there are three or four people there, as you walk in and the doors close, Take charge, seize the opportunity. Say, good morning, you may be wondering why I called this meeting, but I thought it would be quite interesting for us to get to know each other and understand the way in which we can help each other. And as the doors come to a, open for a lift, say, thank you very much indeed, same time next week and leave. Now, <laughs> you'll enjoy that, they will enjoy that. They'll talk about this strange man who started a meeting in a lift, but you're beginning to build a relationship and you're also personally breaking down your inhibitions about saying something. Just imagine that you get into a lift with someone who could be your biggest client ever and you're petrified and don't say a word and you've missed the opportunity. So tip, be ready to seize the opportunity. Know what you do and how you can put that over as a benefit and then seize the opportunity. So we would need to be uh, ready at any time to uh, give a solid reply to the question, what is it that you do? And uh, uh, yes, actually thinking about it, it's true that a lot of people reply, I am this and I am that. Um, however, they don't really specify what service and how they have their clients. Let me, let, me it's give you a, let me give you an example. There's a lady who came to one of my trainings who does, what do you do? HR. Now that's pretty boring, isn't it? Almost that's as that. boring as being an accountant or a banker. But I trained her to say, in fact, uh, when asked, what do you do? I help managing directors sleep at night. Now, Gordon, surely you have to say, really? How do you do that? Or can you do that for me? But the point is you started a conversation. And what I've done when I say, really? How do you do that? Is I've given her permission to explain in some detail about employment contracts, and employment tribunals, and so on. An answer to a question of what you do, it gives you in the end permission from that person to talk to them is excellent because they've in fact set the stage for you, you're given that opportunity. So you do need to know what you do and you've got to be ready to answer the question in a way that intrigues. Very interesting actually, very interesting to try out and start a conversation with, with uh, one by replying to one question. Um, David, through your experience, uh, I know that you have met with a lot of businesses throughout your career. Um, uh, what is, what is the secret? What is the real secret of success? <laughs> Tough one. <laughs> well, if you're talking business terms, you've got to have something to offer. Uh, why should anyone do business with you when there are lots of other people doing what you apparently do? You have to give added value. That's why you need to be able to explain the answer to what do you do. That, that what is special about you? What, what is special about Gordon Patrick? What's special about your business? What's unique? What is it the other people don't do? You need to look for that opportunity. But all the successful business people I know are goal-driven. They prepare their goals. They know what they want to achieve. They're driven to go for it. But they've also determined that they're going to be successful. They know they're going to win. If you start a conversation or phone call believing you're going to lose, you will lose. You've got to believe you're going to get the girl, you're going to get the contract. David, it's, uh, it's definitely an interesting conversation we're having. We are dealing with different aspects of, ne of, aspects of networking. And even this, the elevator pitch, you, you would need to be able to immediately connect with someone whom you have just met at a meeting in a way that, that he or she will remember you 
um, later on, or in a way that at least allows you to uh, at least ask for a meeting. When it comes to referrals, though, how, how easy it is to actually convince someone else requiring a service um, uh, that another person is, is, is perfect f f to match their needs? How, how easy it is to pass on referrals to your colleagues in a networking group? You must not be pushy. If I realised you needed a particular service and I said, oh, you must go to so-and-so, they're absolutely outstanding, they'll do a great job for you. Forget the rest. Go. Your defence mechanisms are going to come up. You don't want to be pushed by me. If I say to you, gosh, that's interesting, Gordon, you're going to do that. Um, I'll tell you what, you might put this person on your short list. They're very professional, very good. And what's more, they don't charge like a wounded buffalo. In other words, I'm not giving you a hard sell. Your feeling would be, oh, David's actually trying to help me. He's giving me another option and he's not pushing it hard. The key is that you've got to feel I'm offering a name and an introduction to help you rather than pushing you or thinking, you thinking, that I'm going to get a commission out of it because I'm not. I'm just helping them in the same way I'm seeking to help you. So an attitude of wanting to help is probably the starting point for all of it. Definitely, it's a very interesting concept indeed. So, which brings me to my uh, almost last question because I do, I will have another final one. Um, how is, how can you make the best use out of a networking group? It's not just about referrals. It's, it gives you. We spoke about friendship, relationship, etc. So, how can you uh, make the best use of a networking group? I think the best use just happens if you've got the right attitude. If you're there to take, take, take. It's not going to work for you. And the group I'm with, our philosophy is give us gain. You need to give. So my attitude is very much to put my arm around your shoulder, metaphorically, and say, well, interesting, Gordon. What can I do for you? How can I help? I'm off to South Africa next week. Anything I can do for you? An attitude of always wanting to help brings out the best in the other people. Once you've got your network established, you've got to look after it, though. You can't just think, tick, I've got them, they're a friend. A bit like social media, I suppose. You've actually got to go on working at it and massaging it. A bit like a marriage, they tell me. You've got to keep working on it. Definitely. So, David, this is the final question. This is the way we uh, always uh, end all of, all of our programs. What tips, what suggestions would you be able to pass on um, to those who are thinking about starting off their own business or else are at startup level? Well, you need, we cover this a little bit, you need to give added value, you need to be perceived to be giving added value. Try it on a few people, see what they think, listen to their advice. But in general, uh, something else I mentioned earlier, spend 80% of the time on working on solutions rather than 20% on problems. If you're looking there to help people and achieve something, set your goals, work out what you need, personal skills, personal knowledge, and who can help you, and then just go for it. Like a rhino, keep charging. Don't let anything get in your way. Things can go wrong, but they will go wrong. But don't worry, tomorrow is another day. It is. Just go for it. <laughs> Thank you, David. Thank you for that. Let me just translate for, for the benefit of our audience. The Lumpur Adnet Kelmuma, David Bullock, who is the National Director of BNI, BNI Business Networking International. We are talking about networking. Um, uh, jifiri grup ta' nies li naqdu flimkien bix jien u l-xuxin um, isaħu n-negozi taħħu ma jahdux commissions bejnietom il-lu l-ka commitment il-li kollum naturalment u għadak il-li bejnietom jirreferr u l-xuxin uh, l-l-klienti taħħu mu għal-lu rabbek jidġi ġenerat um, business differenti f-malta u għamez gruppi jakxa għad tikun interessat um, jista, jista jibatinna e-mail jow message fuq il-Facebook page taħna għalli nkun nistaw naddu l-informazzjoni għax verament jie għodda interessanti speċalment għal minadu jibda il-negozi tijow. David, I thank you once more for uh, finding time for this interview and now we'll present you with a uh, fantastic traditional Maltese dish prepared by this restaurant named The Artisan Baker who might thank for hosting us again uh, for yet another edition of Business Jet. I look forward to coming. Do they have a lift, by the way? Massimo, it's job in the loop. Mela, Anna, so Lia, we'll contour Nimaha. Kifu call Anna Lisp not. Sir Root.
Grazie mille, grazie Massimo. Jena, ne ringrazio a Comta li seguito un altro bohera, ne tamo li seppto dal programma interessanti. Dime, ne haggis Comta lo contatto mai una permessa dal Facebook page tana. Li tolgo su Facebook o fittesh Business Chat Malta. Nel tao, il giorno di la, all'edizione ho fatto Business Chat.